Okay, so again, today is Monday, February 21st, and uh, this is about contour drawing. So um, again, the exercise comes from a book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, which is this one by Betty Edwards. She picked up, she picked up the exercise from a previous book by uh, a guy named Nicolaitis and that's called the natural way to draw, okay? I have, um, in iLearn, I have the PDF of the chapter from the natural way to, I mean, drawing from the, on the right side of the brain, and the chapter itself is called Getting Around Your Symbol System, Meeting Edges and Contours. So I'm just gonna talk for a second about this idea of contour as she describes it, or as she defines it, and also how I uh, also have a timer here, about 16 minutes, so uh, don't go over. Um, now contour, if you're a landscape architect, there's these things that you see on a map, okay? And it's a way to describe an object even though you can't fully see it. So if this is the top of a mountain, you know, that's the valley down here. Uh, these lines describe equal heights. So you can see that here it's a more gentle slope, right? Whereas here it's a more steep slope. Uh, so these are contour lines. And interesting enough, they figured this, they, the guy who invented was a Frenchman. They were doing a survey of a mountain and they were measuring different heights. They were trying to figure out how, actually the mass of the earth, that's what they were trying to figure out. So they were taking all these measurements and he noticed that the similar numbers made these really nice, lit, neat little, almost lines. So what they did is, it just connected the dots, so to speak, and he came up with contour lines. Um, now we talked about contour lines, let me just make a number here. Uh, when we were drawing objects and we said, oh, you know, how do I draw a sphere? Well, I can imagine that we have contour lines, even though they're not there. Um, I get this sense of the object, okay? So it's like doing almost a wireframe or something. Uh, you know, maybe it's a bottle. So that's another kind. In the sense of contour drawing, uh, in the sense of the natural way to draw, she defines it more like a boundary between two things, you know? So if I have a hand, you know, this would be a contour line. So it's a little bit different, but uh, it really is kind of the basic uh, element of a drawing, right? Uh, now, the chapter is called Getting Around Your Symbol System. So that means how do you get around what you already know? And she talks about how as kids we, you know, we're told, oh, okay, draw a tree, and, you know, you draw a tree, and that's, you know, that's a tree, and, and when we grow up, it's hard to get away from these uh, symbols, and also you might call these stereotypes, because uh, we kind of, you know, we, we, we're kind of bound to those images, but you could do something like this, right? And this is something that Mike Lane talks about and shows, and all of a sudden, you know, that's a more interesting tree, right? So it's a little bit less of a stereotype of a tree as this one. Um, so she talks also, again, right side and left side, right? So this is language, and this is more, gosh, instinct, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to say something stupid now because I'm not a psychologist, but uh, anything to do with like, you know, your, your sort of body kind of on a more uh, deeper level. Uh, and this is more on a learned level. Uh, so we want to get away from uh, having this side of the brain taking over when we draw. Okay, so some of the things that she talks about, for example, are singing a song. And that actually is pretty hard. Or like reciting a poem or talking while you're drawing. And you'll see that that's, that gets, you know, starts to be hard because if I, I don't know, I can't think of a song now, but if I 
start to talk, I can see that I've, you know, I have trouble because if I, if I keep talking, like, oh my gosh, you know. Um, so, so anyway, uh, the idea is to keep your left brain busy so it doesn't like interfere with what you're doing with your right side. Um, and that's one of the things that, we, that she describes. Uh, now, a couple of things that she talks about taping your sheet down so that it doesn't move because uh, what you'll be doing is drawing without actually looking at the drawing. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, then the other thing is to actually follow with your eyes the object that you're drawing and kind of transfer that movement to your pencil. And again, without looking at the drawing. And she talks about doing it fairly slowly, you know, which is a little bit the opposite of what I've been talking about, like try not to do the little ant crawl type of thing. So that's an interesting uh, variation. Um, but I think there could be like a middle ground. You could move a little, a little faster. Um, the article is very interesting. You should, you should read it. But let's, uh, let's start drawing some of these things now. Um, at the end of the PDF, uh, let's see if I find it. oh yeah, at the end of this PDF, which is already in iLearn, which are my examples from last year, um, I have a list. And so the list is this. So you can tape the sheet down. Uh, do not look at the drawing while you're drawing. Do not erase. That's terrible. Um, do not lift the pencil as much as you can. Uh, imagine touching the object. So the idea would be that when you're drawing, you're almost like doing this sort of 3D scanning. Uh, you know, almost like a pantograph. Uh, there is actually machines that, you know, once you have a model, will actually follow that model and a pantographic arm will make you know, a copy of that thing. Um, uh, sing and have a song. I can put music on if you guys like. <laughs> um, and you'll see it's really, really hard. If you try to sing a song and try to stick to the words and you try to draw at the same time, it's like inevitably they're like, you know. Uh, that's why actors are very good at doing more than one thing at once. Um, do not edit the drawing, don't erase, uh, and then don't worry about drawing something first and, and something last. Uh, so we can set a timer. Um, I'm now sticking to my 15 minutes, but when we do different ones, um, we'll do an object, uh, looking at the object, not looking at the drawing. Uh, then we'll do uh, your hand, again, looking away, um, and now I'm going to get a really stiff neck, but so you put your hand behind yourself and you draw your hand um, without looking at the drawing. And you might want to set your hand onto something because it's going to get tiring. Uh, and then the last, you can then do it by looking at the drawing once in a while. Okay, so first, uh, don't do look at the drawing at all. Okay, it's... Uh, it's a little bit easier uh, not to look at the drawing, of course, if, you, if your object is away from the drawing itself. So this is my example of a chair, uh, which I think I did simply by looking ahead of me. So let's see if we can maybe make another one. Um, and you can start doing this. You can pick either an object that, that, that's on your desk or a, uh, maybe in front of you, maybe the person in front of you. So uh, now for me, it's really hard not to look at the drawing because I have also the monitor in front of me. <laughs> and I tend to look at it all the time because uh, I don't want to go off frame. But let me just see. I'll, I'll draw this thick. I'll draw this brush. Um, and I'll just put it, let's see, I'll just put it up here so that I don't have, so that I don't see the drawing. Um, and I just, you know, I just kind of, so the idea is you, you just, now I, I still see, like with a with a with a peripheral vision, I can still see. Unfortunately, my setup now has too much information because I see the screen in front of me. Um, I should probably do it this way. There, now I don't see it anymore. Um, and then you just you see it's it's so easy to go back to the drawing, right? Um, and then you draw, and you probably start laughing in a minute because whatever I'm drawing is not. <laughs> 
very good, but that's okay. That's the idea, right? Um, okay, so somewhere here, the, the number maybe. Uh, and you just and you just continue doing it. Um, and that doesn't look like a brush at all. Uh, but I think, you know, you, you could go back to this drawing and fix it if you wanted to, or you can just leave it alone. Uh, but you can get already from a drawing like this some of the characteristics of the brush that are not, um, you know, kind of photographic or realistic, but have some sort of like brushness you know, yeah, brushness to them. Um, you know, here for example. Uh, the shape, of course, this of course is too fat. Um, so I'm gonna try to do another one. And the idea really is not to see, oh, okay, I'm gonna make it better and better and better. Um, okay, now I'm just, just gonna leave it there. So what I'm doing now is really using contour more as like, a, yeah, I'm kind of seeing it, so I'm a little cheating here. But even in a quick drawing like this, um, you have a hole there, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm doing a little bit in between now because I can see it with, a, with a, my peripheral vision, but um, <coughs> And then when you look at it and say, okay, it doesn't look exactly like a brush, uh, but it makes for an interesting drawing. And that's something that, granted, in what we do with, with drafting and sketching, it's a little bit difficult to achieve because most of the time the drawings are very set, right? Very exact, very geometric. Uh, but it is still true that even if I, you know, even if this was like a good drawing of a brush, um, this one is no less an abstraction than that. In other words, it looks more realistic, but it's still a very abstract drawing because I'm asking you to make this leap from, you know, the real thing to a bunch of lines, okay? And once you get past the fact that it may not look exactly like it, then you can work on the drawing by itself to make it, uh, sort of live by its own devices, live by its own means. Um, and you can be, you know, I don't want to use the word creative because that's a little, little bit of a loaded word, but, um, but just so the idea that drawing is really not about, of course, making things, you know, look like uh, the real object. You know, there's an inner life to a drawing that, that goes beyond, you know, trying to make it exactly the same, okay? So go ahead and uh, do this now, and I'll just come around. Let me just quickly look at my hands. Okay, so the hand, uh, let me see how much time I have. Okay, I think I have about five more minutes. So we'll do a hand, um, again, face away and, and face away from the drawing, turn back and draw your hand. Uh, now I'm just gonna I'm not very comfortable. <laughs> um, and I think she's right about taping the paper because as it shifts it's hard for me to Okay, that looks like two hands. Um, I can try another one. Anyway, let me, uh, these are something that I did last, last year. Um, oh yeah, you can do your portrait too, like a self-portrait, imagining how you are, without, without um, uh, lifting up the pencil, okay? And uh, I mean, you can see that I emphasize certain things, because I, now they're there, and it's kind of like, I think I'm too tall, um, but it's kind of fun to do this, you know, putting a lot of hair here. 
<laughs> I'd say that's how you can tell you're getting old when you're when you start growing a beard in your ears. Um, another hand, and another hand, and then I think this one I did at the office after class, where I went back and then I started by uh, looking once in a while. Okay, looking at the hand once in a while. But still with this sort of very quick, you know, kind of not worrying too much. Uh, and then that class also drew this, which is the projector overhead, um, pretending it's an helicopter. But, um, so let's, let me put the, um, the list of things again up on the screen. We'll end with that, and then we'll just draw off. Okay, so yeah, let's tape it down. Uh, don't look at the drawing. Do not erase, do not lift pencil. Imagine touching the object. Uh, sing a song, do not edit, and don't worry about doing some parts first and then the others. Again, which is like the opposite of, where, of the way we normally draw, right? If we drew a hand, we would say, oh, okay, I break it down into parts. Uh, here it's kind of saying, no, just, just draw it, just like, don't worry about it, okay? So let's see, we'll do an object, okay, not looking. Um, we'll do a self-portrait. Without looking, of course, because unless you have a mirror. Um, and then we do the we do the hand. Not looking. And then you probably run out of time, but if you have time, do the hand. <coughs> looking once in a while. Yeah, I encourage you to read the PDF, which is already in iLearn. Uh, it's a nice, it's a nice tackle. Okay, so that's that.